because now we're going to do the news. Yes, and we begin with the Maserati Coupe, which is a car we've never been entirely sure about, mainly because we don't think it's that good looking. However, there is a new one. It's called the Maserati Gran Turismo. I have a picture of it, and it's a thing of beauty, isn't oh, it? Yeah. Ooh, that yeah. is gorgeous. Hey, you can tell Christian Scott Thomas is coming into the studio as a guest today. Oh. He's wearing a suit. Look at him. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> all my jeans are in the wash. Oh, really? All of a sudden, 92 programmes we've done, you've been in jeans. Now, today, when Kristen's coming in, they're all mucking. I thought he was going for a job interview. He's got that. <laughs> exactly right. It's exactly how he looks. This Maserati... He's had his hair cut as well, hasn't he? He has. <laughs> you know? I have had my hair cut because it was too long. Were well, you combing week, it frantically before shut you... Shut up. <laughs> What did you say? I was going to say, last week I had mine cut, and you said having your hair cut on the studio day was gay. <laughs> did you? Not? I said did you it? should spend more than four pounds on a haircut, James. That's what I actually said. So why didn't you? Shut up! <laughs> anyway, the Maserati. This Maserati, what's it got under the bonnet? It's a 4.2 4. V8. Same as the old one. Yep, 405 horsepower, automatic gearbox. It's going to be £73,000. I'm besotted with it. I, I think it looks absolutely stunning. I mean, if you're thinking of buying like an Aston DB9 or uh, V8, now that's the alternative. It is a good looking thing, but there's an alternative to the alternative. It's got a sister car. Let's have a look at that. The Alfa Romeo 8C. Come on, say it. <laughs> He's been practicing all week. Here we go. Competizione. Yeah! <laughs> Sounds like a sneeze, but it is related. Um, it's got a 4.7 litre V8, so the engine's slightly bigger. It's related underneath, but it's got this beautiful carbon fibre body over the top. The only thing is, as an alternative, there is a problem. They're only making 500, and they are all sold. But I think that's better looking, actually. No, nah. Maserati. nah, Maserati's better. Put the Maserati back up. There, no, that's I think better. the Alpha's better looking. No, I'd have that. Well, why don't you ask Christine which she'd prefer? <laughs> I have will. that. It'll be nice to talk to somebody intelligent. Can I just say, OK, it's been a while since we, we sat here as a group, as you know, uh, so I thought it would be a good idea just to canter through a few of the good cars and bad cars we've driven uh, while we've been off air. And I have to say, good cars for me, Lexus. Particularly, actually, the GS, the one in the middle. I'm with you. Yeah. The hybrid one, though. No, no, under this one, OK? This looks like a normal car. Great thing is, OK, its batteries will only take you less than a mile. Which means most of the time you're on the V6, you know, you're chewing fuel, you're warming the world up, everybody's happy, OK? It's very quiet, it's very fast, it's very, very comfortable. And, of course, you can drive it to London, do U-turns on Piccadilly all day long, Ken Livingston can't charge you a penny. Brilliant it's car, a It's a properly brilliant car, that. I'm going to put, like, a little 9-volt battery in a Hummer. <laughs> it's a hybrid. It's a hybrid. <laughs> Um, I, was, I was very <laughs> impressed, if I may be, by the Suzuki Swift Sport. Oh, yeah. Now, it's, yeah. this is the most underrated... <laughs> no, wait. It's not going over well, mate. It's not going wait. over well. Before you all chime in, it's a small car, but you know I'm not a big fan of the new Mini. I'm just, it's too big and lumpy and all the rest of it. That, I think, is the new Mini. Mm. Try it. You'll be amazed. It's brilliant, that car. That is an order from him. Actually, to be honest, I quite like that as well. I, I actually really did like the Volvo C30. And I don't think I've gone mad, but it's a good-looking car. And yes. you can get it with that five-cylinder engine that's basically well, it's exactly the same one as in the Focus ST, the hot one. And, of course, the big news this week that's been occupying all the bulletins is that 1.5, I think, 1.5 million people have signed this petition protesting about the uh, plans to implement road charging, you know, pay-as-you-go stuff. Uh, now, if you if you want to add your name to that petition, here is the address, http colon double forward slash petitions dot pm dot gov dot uk forward slash travel tax, OK? That's the, uh, the address. Now, obviously, this being the BBC, if you think uh, road pricing is a good idea and you want to register your uh, thoughts on that, there's a website too. There it is. Um, <laughs> and um, <laughs> that's the one with that. Do you know the, uh, the hot Renault Clio? It was a really yeah. fast one. They've done an even hotter one, OK? It's called the R27. It's got a lower, stiffer chassis. We've got a photograph of it here, OK? Now, these are the four Renault Formula One racing drivers, OK, for, for this year. Now, this chap, OK, the new one, he really likes this car. He's very excited by it. He's very, very excited. <laughs> If you look at 
look around, the other guys who clearly spotted the problem, well, you could hardly <laughs> miss it, <laughs> could you? Are all very embarrassed. Don't look. But, but what, you, you see this? OK, I got this photograph from a French website. The actual official photograph that was sent to it by Renault. Let me show it to you. Look, they said, go and stand behind the car, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's embarrassing. But they're is. all racing drivers. Couldn't they have lent him a crash helmet to hold in the appropriate way? It, it was were. his crash helmet that caused the problem. Well, <laughs> leave it. It's really simple. It's all to do with, I have passion for the Ferrari. I respect that, but I have pa It's like David Attenborough. I respect David Attenborough. I mean, just infinite respect, in the same way as I respect that car. But I have no passion for him. I don't want to make love to him. Yeah, but, <laughs> but I have respect and passion for the 911. There you are. You've just admitted on television you want to make love to David Attenborough. <laughs> He's just said that. Your logic sometimes, mate, is the most warped thing. Ha I don't... Shut up. <laughs> OK, we I shall won. do the news. Right. And now, the news. And we begin this week... <laughs> with... 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 <clears throat> with the Porsche 911. <laughs> More specifically... The Porsche 911 GT3 RS. Oh, now that is a business. It's faster, it's lighter, it's torter. It's possibly the ultimate 911. In the same way that Ebola is the ultimate tropical disease. And what's all that <laughs> scaffolding in the well, It's a roll cage for when you take... No, I'm sorry. If I see scaffolding around a building, I think, well, they haven't finished that yet. I'm sorry, I'm saying they haven't finished. <laughs> No, it's a roll cage. I, look, I will admit, there's perhaps the only, the only problem with this otherwise brilliant car is that it's not the most practical. If you want to pop down to the newspaper shop, you've got to clamber in over the roll cage, lower yourself into the bucket seat, do up the six-point race harness, prime the fire extinguisher system. It's going to take time. So, in the real world, my 1.2-litre Fiat Panda is faster to the shops. <laughs> no, I, mate, it's no, just it is. not. I only have no. to put the seatbelt on once. You've got to do it six times. OK, I've got to do that and that. then wait whilst you put your seatbelt on and then do all your pre-flight checks to make sure the air vents are all... <laughs> <laughs> News from the Director of Public Prosecutions, who I discovered in the paper this week is called Ken something Not or other. called Ken. Ken is the name of a man you borrow a stepladder from. Yeah. Not the Director of Public Prosecutions. Ken has announced that there's a whole raft of new motoring offences for which you can go to prison, OK? One of them is retuning your radio... No, oh, don't what? be stupid. Seriously? Well, what if the Archers comes on? Ooh. <laughs> I can't listen to an episode of the Archers in the car without losing my temper and having a crash, deliberately, to end it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've got something that's really bugging me. Has anyone seen these average speed cameras that are kicking around now? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you've got to do... I was found on the M25 the other day through the road where you had to do an average of 40 miles an hour measured by two cameras, one at the beginning, one at the end. That's impossible. It's impossible because you drive along and you're sort of looking around and think, oh, God, I'm doing 42 because I'm going downhill. You think, well, God, I've been doing that for half a mile, so now I need to ha do half a mile at 38. Which means you can only look at the speedometer. You can't look at anything else, only the speedometer. And you go through roadworks on the M25 in the rain at rush hour. And I know what they're doing here. It's the government. Gordon Brown has worked out that he's got to pay all our pensions because we're all going to live forever. They're trying to kill us off. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> I know how to get round it. OK, you go past the first camera, pull over, get the newspaper out, read it, listen to the radio for ten minutes, do 120 for the rest of the way. There. <laughs> That's not quite right, actually, because I can prove that the way to keep traffic moving through the roadworks, which is where those average speed cameras are, yeah. is for everybody to go faster from the start. Yeah. It's all down to the work of the Swiss physicist Daniel Bernoulli. You're familiar with him? Oh, him. Thought so. He isn't. <laughs> no, he is. He's never heard of him. But what he essentially proved was that in a system, the pressure and the volume multiplied together must be a constant. So if you've got a busy motorway and it gets thinner and there's less space for the cars to go through, they must go faster for the flow rate of cars to remain the same. So it's like when you put your thumb over the end of a hose pipe, the water comes out That's quicker, exactly so. what it's like, So yeah. how fast, then, if you take three-lane motorway down to one lane, how fast does the traffic have to move in order to keep the flow rate the same? Well, the formula 
would be VN would be LO over LR times the VE. <laughs> so how fast? Which is 210. 210 miles an hour, yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Fair enough. All going by Bugattis and Zondas to uh, cure congestion. Ken has decided that we will have to tolerate these things because you're not allowed to reach you in the radio. You're also not allowed to put lipstick on. Again? What? No. <laughs> <laughs> but get this one, you're not allowed now to be an undertaker. Well, I ain't got an undertaker. Are you an undertaker? You're an undertaker, you're going to prison. <laughs> Ken says, Ken says if you undertake someone... Oh, I ain't got Well, it's, 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 I've always had a bit of a b beef about this, because I reckon if you go past someone on the inside, there's room to do that. There was room for them to have got out of the way in the first place. Yeah. It's them. They're the ones who should be prosecuted. They can't find prisons to put paedophiles in, but they're going to be putting him in it for being an undertaker. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Well, actually, they can't find the paedophiles, because 300 have gone missing. Uh, I know where they are. If you drive down the outside lane of a motorway now, not reaching in the radio at 50 miles an hour, OK, you are immune from prosecution, OK? So it's the ideal place to go if you're being looked for by the law. <laughs> so, therefore, anyone doing 50 in the outside lane of a motorway is a child molester. Oh, no. <laughs> wow, that's amazing! You've used logic there, that's, that's incredible. How are you with that? <laughs>
No, seriously, it's got like a supercharged and a turbocharged engine, which is as smooth as falling downstairs while wearing leg calipers. <laughs> Just work harder and buy the Golf GTI. There's a Top Gear top tip. Good advice. I was pretty disappointed. I, I, I hate to have to say this, Bentley Arnage T. Not the R, oh, which this is, is brilliant. This is useful consumer advice for people in the North. Well, actually... <laughs> it is. And I'm sorry, it is, because the T has a bit more power and a bit more torque, and it's just enough to spoil it. If you stick with the R, which is a beautiful car, it costs £12,000 less, so you can buy a house. <laughs> Now, there's a new uh, Mondeo coming out in June. I've got a picture of it here, and uh, it'll be brilliant. It will. Well, it, the last one was. It was brilliant at everything. It looks fantastic. A couple of things. I think it's got a bit too much mascara round its headlamps. No, I know what you mean. It's just... I, I had a bit of that going on in the studio last week, actually. The makeup lady put too much... Um, uh, hang on. <laughs> you, were, you were wearing mascara? Well, it's whatever the makeup lady puts on us before we walk in. She... Yes, I guess so. I don't know. You let her. Oh, for crying out... Well, you let her make you look like a spaniel every week, so... <laughs> I just want to get back to the car, if I may. The other yes. thing is, I've looked, there's engine specs, it's 1.8s and diesels and 2 litres. There's no hot one. You remember the days of the Cortina, there was the Lotus Cortina and the Sierra, there was the Sierra Cosworth. There's no hot version of this, because what you want is like a Mondeo Vindaloo. <laughs> but actually, what if they just name the whole range after curries, depending on how hot they are? That'd be good. Yeah, that's, well, that's a good idea. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> you could do like Sainsbury's do with those little chilies on the back, and then I yeah. could have the gel frazzy. Yeah. He could have the korma. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's fast enough for me. <laughs> I really do like that idea, because you're bringing together sort of two great British institutions. Indian food and a car made in Belgium. <laughs> yeah. And now the news, and we start off with the Porsche Cayenne, because they've revised it, come up with a new one, it's got new prices, new bits and pieces, new engines. But the most important thing, of course, about the Cayenne is it's... It's never been the best-looking car, has it, really? No, no, not even slightly. Well, we can only assume that this new one still isn't exactly the best-looking car, because, well, here's the official photograph that Porsche sent out for us to... <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> I can hear the discussion that the photographer had, actually, with the director. He said, is the light good for you? And he said, no, there still is some. Yes, exactly! <laughs> I've got some of the questions, and I'd like to share some of the questions BBC employees have to face with you, OK? You ready? We'll bring them up on the screen here. You have a blowout on the motorway. One for you here, Hammond. What instinctive <laughs> reaction... <laughs> what instinctive reaction should you avoid? Accelerating! What? Oh, my tyre's is... gone! <laughs> this is instinctive Taking reaction. Taking your hands off the steering wheel. Well, that'll help. <laughs> It's just maniacs. They're just... I'm so irritated by this. I can't believe it. And then, exceeding the speed limit in a built-up area is acceptable in vehicles fitted with anti-lock braking systems. What? Do you strongly disagree, disagree, agree, or strongly agree? Oh, it's not going to be an excuse, is it? Yeah, officer, it's OK. I was doing 110 through the village. I have ABS. Yeah. <laughs> no ticket for me. Why are you looking angry with me, officer? What's the primary hazard facing drivers when driving at night? Anyone want to hazard a guess at that? No, hang on, let's just go on. What's... yeah? What? Dark? Anything else? Germans. Germans. <laughs> these are all valid, valid None points. of these things are on my list. Anybody else got any thoughts? Peasants. Peasants. <laughs> No, it's um, glare from other vehicles' headlamps. Cyclists in dark clothing, it's their own fault for not working hard enough and having a car. <laughs> Fatigue and staying alert. And it now means you've got to spend 20 minutes next week failing the test and then going on a course. So I'm sorry we won't be here, ladies and gentlemen, next week, but we'll be much safer drivers when we get back. <laughs>
made redundant. The party dubbed Fundable will include a buffet dinner. How much do I not want to go to that? <laughs> uh, bar, disco and live band. Wow, a TVR band. So they'll play presumably really loud, really fast and then burst into flames. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know that new law about kids under four foot five, they have to use booster seats in the car. He does. Yes, all right. <laughs> all right. People under four foot five have to use a booster seat in the car. Yeah. Well, in North Yorkshire, the police say they cannot enforce that law. And do you know why? They do not have the... <laughs> <laughs> they do not have the legal... <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for this now. The legal... <laughs> Because they do not have the legal right to me measure children. <laughs> <laughs> to just measure them. Just if you see a policeman measuring your children, you think, quick, call the... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so they'll have to do what they usually do then and just put up some new sort of camera by the road to monitor children in no, class to make no, sure they No, 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 you can't video children. You ever been to a school sports day? You have to ask every parent there before you're allowed to take the camera out of the boot. Or go to your own kid's sports day. Maybe they'll let you... <laughs> Last week, did you see the American programme last week? Yeah. We, you know we got into a spot of bother in a petrol station in Alabama. <laughs> Turned out we missed a trick. Because, you know when that woman came out and she said, are you gay or looking to get beat up in a hick town? You know that one? And yeah. I said, oh, no, no, actually, I'm married with three children. If only you'd said, well, actually, I'm married with two children, we could have just pointed at Bachelor Boy. <laughs> <laughs> but the one with long hair, is it? Exactly. What's the... Kick the snot out of him. <laughs> Hey, now, Jaguar have made a concept car. Well, well, not another one. That's why they never make any money, isn't it? Because they just keep making concept cars all the time instead of just making cars that you can buy. Oh, well, no, they haven't understood that if you sell a car, you get money. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, this one, OK, they say, which we've got a picture of it here, OK, they say that is going to be the next S-Type. It'll look exactly the same as that. Well, if that's true, that's fantastic news. It looks brilliant. Oh, no, it does. I went to see it in the flesh the other day, and the designer was there, and he said, I assure you, the S-Type will look exactly like that. If that car comes out like that, I will cut my left leg off, beat myself to death with it. <laughs> really? Yeah. Do it. Do it. <laughs> make it. Just make it. You know Aston Martin's for sale? Yeah. Which I can't understand, because Ford, the only profitable part of the whole Ford business, is Aston Martin, and they decided to sell it. But anyway, the, the um, leading bid at the moment is from an Egyptian consortium. Carpets will be nice. <laughs> <laughs> really, really elaborate. <laughs> really elaborate. Yeah, and buying one's going to be interesting. You go down to my brother's Abdul Martin <laughs> shop. <laughs> For you, my friend. <laughs> I make a nice special price. Special price. <laughs> <laughs> News from the BBC, OK? If, you, if you're a BBC employee and you drive fleet cars or hire cars, you've now got to go on a safe driving programme. Well, we drive those, do we? Have we to? do. Yes, we do. No way. I'm absolutely not kidding. It says here, uh, BBC driving is now acknowledged as one of the most serious work-related health and safety issues. It isn't. It's just something that's more comfortable than walking. Yes. And then it goes on, the BBC is committed in reducing the risk associated with this activity. And making it sound like masturbation. Stop driving, you'll go blind. Exactly. 